Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today we're going to talk about the newest version of Photoshop and the best feature for wildlife photographers right after this. All right, photographers, they have a new version of Photoshop out. It's called Photoshop 2023. And in this version, I'm only going to talk about one specific feature because I think this one is really great, especially if you're a wildlife really, really important if you're a bird photographer. I think it can make your life really, really easy. So I'm gonna compare the new feature called Delete and Fill with the old feature, or one of the old features called Content Aware Fill. Let's get right into it. So I've opened up Photoshop, and again, I'm, I'm working on the newest update, October 2022. The version is called Photoshop 2023. If you're not sure what version you're using, just run up to help, hit About Photoshop, and this will tell you the current version you're on. You can see this release is 24.0. So I've got the first release of 2023. This one really neat addition is going to be helpful for bird and wildlife photography. There's no doubt in my mind. It's really great for object removal or distraction removal. With bird photography, a lot of times leaves, branches might get in the way. And if you just want to clean those up, there's a really simple and powerful tool that is also extremely uh, quick to use. I'm going to show you real quickly how it compares to one of the other older methods of removing something like this leaf. So we're going to focus on this leaf down here in the bottom corner. And we're going to try two different ways to remove it. We're going to try an older method using content aware fill, which simply takes a selection that we're going to make. And then it samples the background and uses different patterns to fill in the area that you selected. Now, the first way that we're going to select this is just to take the lasso tool. So if you look on the left side, you'll see me grabbing this little lasso tool here. And I'm just going to select this leaf real roughly. I don't have to be precise when I do this. So there's my selection. I'm going to go to the edit menu. And there's a drop down here for content aware fill. Now, if you're also, if you, if you're using a mouse with a right click, you can right click that. And you can see the same option here, content aware fill. It's the same algorithm. It's going to do the same thing no matter where you run it from. One of the nice things about content aware fill is you get a live preview. So you could see the green here is called the sampled area. That's the area that Photoshop is going to use to fill in what you want it to fill in. Now, if I look at the preview here, it gives me a real time update. And I'm going to scroll over to where that leaf is. This is the actual replacement using the values that are selected. You'll see on my brush, there's a little minus sign. So if I want to take away some of this, and generally I take away the hard edges, the in-focus things, and we'll get rid of this bird. And I'm looking for this pattern to look natural and for colors to match up about the right way. If they're not, I can take away from the selection. So I'm taking away some of the darker areas. Or I can also add to it. And if I want to add to it, I'm just going to simply hit the Alt key on PC. And I'm just going to add some lighter areas. And you should see this start to lighten up as I put in more of the light areas. I'm going to keep adding in some of these lighter areas. And I'm just looking right in here. It's not doing a whole lot of adjustment. but it is changing that sample a little bit. So let's, let's say that that's as good as I'm going to get for that sample. I can go ahead and hit OK. Now, before I hit OK, I like to output this to a new layer. This isn't a tutorial, by the way, on Content Aware Fill, but if you are using it, the two best features for me, one is the ability to select the sampled areas in green that you just saw me do. The second is to export it as a new layer. So I'm not working destructively here. I can export this, and you'll see right over here, onto a new layer that I can then toggle on and off, and I can even make adjustments to that layer if I needed to. All right, so let me deselect that. I'm just gonna real quickly name this uh, Content Aware. So this is an older way to fill in an area. It's been around for a while. Oops, Content Aware, there we go. All right, now what's the new way of doing this? In order for me to show you the new way, I am gonna duplicate this layer that's called final final for me just meant i did all my adjustments in lightroom i imported it here and i've got i'm ready to just fine tune it i'm going to make a duplicate of this now for me i, I like to drag it down here you can hit uh, command or control j or you can go up to uh, select or you can hit 
uh, layer and you can duplicate the layer from up here. So there's a lot of different ways to duplicate the layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer and bring it to the top. So you'll see me on the right hand side. Now I've got that solid layer up on top. Now let me show you a new way. I'm going to show you two different ways to use delete and fill. The first is very similar to what we just did. We're going to use the lasso tool, just like we did with content aware fill. I'm going to hit the right click. And in this time, I'm going to hit delete and fill. And notice it's not going to bring me up an option. It's literally just going to fill it for me. So it's also destructive. It did it on the same layer without an option to put it into a new layer. So that wasn't my favorite part. And this didn't work really well when I used the lasso tool. So when I used the lasso tool, content aware actually did a little bit better job. Let me delete that real quick. I'll leave it up there. And I'm going to call this lasso delete. Anybody that knows me on social media knows that I can't type accurately. All right. Now I'm going to show you uh, one more thing. Now I'm going to compare content aware fill using this layer when I do something called object select. Now object select a really powerful tool. This isn't a tutorial on it. I would encourage you to play around because it is a pretty neat tool. Over here on the left hand side, you're going to see an option where the quick select tool is and the magic wand tool for object select. I'm going to click that. And at the top, I've got the option to use a rectangle. So I could select the leaf with a rectangle or I could use the same lasso tool that I just did. Now this rectangle tool found that leaf really, really, really well. So I'm going to leave it there because it made a really nice selection. This time I'm going to try content aware to fill when the object is selected, not with a loose lasso, but really a tight uh, object selection. I'm going to right click and I'm hit content aware fill. It's going to bring up the same box as it did before. And I'm going to zoom in down here and I'll show you what happens. And it really doesn't matter what I do with the selection. I can change the selection and take away from it a little bit. What you're going to see is an outline of this leaf. Now you see quite clearly, you see the edges of the leaf. So this did not work at all. Let's compare that to the new feature. And here's where the new feature really, really, really stands out. Well, again, remember the first time I did this, it's a destructive edit, meaning I'm working on a solid layer and when I make a change to this, it's changing the actual pixels on this layer. I'm not going to create a new layer with the changes. I'm going to go up and use the object select tool this time. I'm going to use that rectangle or lasso. It really doesn't matter which one I, I decide to use there. It made the same selection. Now watch this. I'm going to right click and instead of content aware, I'm going to use delete and fill. Now let's look at this one. I'm going to tell you, out of all of the ways I did this, this one was flawless. I don't even need to clean up the edge here. It was perfect for the leaf removal. Let's look at the other ways we did this. So let's just start from the bottom. So this was the original. When I did the, when I did the object select with content aware fill, it was the worst. Didn't work at all. When I did the lasso select, it wasn't bad, but it left a hard edge up here and it didn't fix this area in the process. When I did the lasso and I did a delete and fill, it made a really odd uh, rendering here. It brought in some of the branch and it looks like it's sampled from up here. So the lasso wasn't the right application to use this delete and fill, but when I did delete and fill with an object select, it was perfect. And when I say perfect, there is no, and I'm a pixel peeper sometimes when I'm trying to find errors, there is no way to tell. And it was so simple. All I simply drew, did was select the object, right click, delete and fill, and let it do its thing. And that's it. Now, before I wrap up, I was playing around with delete and fill. And I thought, you know, the leaf might not be the most challenging thing. So let me try something a little more challenging before I wrap up and let you guys go. What about this stick in front of the bird? Let's first attempt this and I'll go down in Photoshop and I'm going to first attempt this by just taking the lasso tool. I'm going to make a nice tight selection here and I'm going to see what content aware fill would do with this section 
And so we'll go up here, we'll do content aware fill. And let's just take a quick look at this. All right. Uh, delete a little bit of this and okay. It exported to a new layer. Not awful. I'll show you a couple mistakes in just a minute, but not awful. And I'm sure we could get a better result if we continued to fine tune it. But again, now we're taking a little bit more time. And one of the great things about the delete and fill is just, it's very, very efficient with time. So let's go to a new layer and we'll put that stick back in. Let's try delete and fill this time using object select. And we'll go ahead. I'm in the lasso mode up here. So we'll just grab a lasso up here. I don't even have to be precise with it, but we'll kind of make a mark there. It should detect the object and it did. So it grabbed that stick real nice. See how delete and fill goes. Right click, delete and fill selection. Just like that, no adjustments, no fine tuning, just a couple clicks. That's pretty good. Let's compare delete and fill here to the stick on content aware fill. Now look at content aware fill made an obvious mistake and I, I could refine this. I think I could get it better if I made a different selection, but again, more time consuming, not as automated. Uh, down around the edge of the body, content aware did a great job and so did delete and fill. Now there was a little, look like a little spider web in here. I would have to clean that up manually. Delete and fill did not, did not detect that as part of the object. So it didn't grab that. So, but that's a pretty easy cleanup if you know how to use the heel brush or, or clone tool. Now, this is the content aware fill here, and I'm zooming in pretty tight. I'm up about 250% of magnification on this. And here's delete and fill. Let's zoom out so you can see what they look like. Delete and fill here versus content aware there. Pretty slick. Very, very easy to use. You saw how quickly it was. You don't have to be an expert in Photoshop to use this. All you have to really understand is how to select an object, which is fairly easy to do. Showed you a couple examples here with the lasso tool. You can also use a rectangle tool. And once you make that selection, you just right click and it's done. All the thinking is done for you and the edges came out. Look at this branch. I mean, it's just really, really flawless. I think this is really, really powerful. Play around with it a little bit. Make sure you're on the right update, Photoshop 2023. Uh, there are some other applications that I'm going to teach over on Patreon that I have already discovered with this that I think are, are really going to be powerful for editing. And uh, so if you're not on my Patreon site, go at least check it out. There's an intro video. I'll put a, a link down in the description that talks a little bit about what Patreon is. But I do a lot of, of little editing tips. And the thing about my editing tips on Patreon is they're specific for bird photography. So if you're a bird photographer looking to improve your editing, I filter out all of that information out there. There's, there's so much information on Photoshop. And I just try to give you the bits and pieces that really apply to bird photography. And like all of my things, whether it's YouTube or Patreon, I try to be super, super practical. What really works and what can benefit you when you're editing your images. So I hope you found this interesting. Hopefully you'll check out the 2023 update on Photoshop and play around a little bit with that delete and fill. I think it's gonna be a great tool for wildlife photographers and I think it's gonna be a really great tool for bird photographers. As always, thanks for your support on this channel and I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.